is Bookworm Whisper. And tonight I am just going to do a revised video of my true crime books. I've added a couple of new ones to my collection and I just wanted to share it with you guys. There is a book that is missing from this pile, unfortunately. I I was reading it earlier and now I cannot find it. But it's called Perfect Poison and I don't know really what it's about because I haven't read it yet, but it's a true crime book, that's all I can tell you. But so this is the one I'm reading now. I'm about halfway through, I guess. So it's D. Let's use the other end of this. D H E G O O D N U R S E. And this book is by Charles Graber. this book before. Also, I want you guys to pick one of these books that I can read to you as like a, a month of October type thing, maybe. Um, except for Conviction, because I did read that book and it's kind of graphic in parts, so I don't feel comfortable reading that one. But it says, give a little pointer here, when Nurse Charles Charlie Cullen was arrested in 2003. Journalists were quick to dub him the angel of death, but Cullen was neither a mercy killer nor a simple monster. He was a son, a husband, a father, a best friend, and a valued caregiver. He was also implicated in the deaths of as many as 400 people and may be the most prolific serial killer in American history. Charlie's career in the world's most trusted profession spanned 16 years across nine hospitals. In this riveting work of investigative journalism, Charles Graber, the only person Colin chose to speak with following his arrest, reveals how Colin got ang away with murder for so long. Based on hundreds of hours of previously unseen and unheard footage, recordings, and red records, as well as extensive interviews with homicide detectives, Colin's friends, family, co-workers, and confidential informants and whistleblowers, plus exclusive one-on-one -on -one interviews with Colin himself. The good nurse paints a dramatic portrait of madness and the bonds of friendship and shines a spotlight on America's medical system. A harrowing and irresistibly based book. You'll never look at a hospital the same way again. I'm going to move my hand different. Sorry. I just wanted to warn you guys before I... Okay. Okay, sorry about that. I wanted to warn you guys before I did it. But that is a good nurse and it's very, very, very good. This guy is crazy. Crazy cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But it's a very, very, very good book. Very good. So that's the good nurse. Okay, the next one is Conviction The Untold Story of Putting Jody Areas Behind Bars. Wrought the nation as the 
prosecution exposed shocking evidence of how areas planned and executed the crime building an irrefutable case that would result in a guilty verdict and a controversial life sentence. Now speaking openly for the first time, Martina shares an inside story of his tireless work to put Jody in areas behind bars. Martinez chronicles the truth behind the multiple facets of Joey Arias, a killer who played the victim with incredible skill, but was capable of unspeakable violence, shedding light on the never-before-told story behind the most damning piece of evidence against Arias, the gas cans. Martinez recounts how he learned of their existence, as well as the length he went to ensure they remained a secret from the public until precisely the right time. Very, very, very good book. Oh yeah, other end. Sorry. So that is Conviction. Yeah. 
guess I'm just trying to wrap my mind around why somebody would do something like that. It's very sad. I want to take a drink of water right quick before I do the other three. Oh, that was loud. Sorry. Okay. The next one I know I've showed you before, but like I said, this is like a revised edition. Okay, it's called Over My Shoulder, and it's by Casey Rueschager. So it's O V E R M Y S H O U L D E R. Says here on April 20, 1999, Casey uh, Ruschager Johnson, excuse me, was a newly transferred junior at Columbine High School. As she sat down to read a magazine in the school library, she had no idea she was about to find herself at the center of an American tragedy, an event that would forever change the course of her life and many others. Moments later, two student government entered the building to continue the massacre they had already begun outside. A now famous photograph shows Casey lying on the ground in the aftermath of the attack in danger of bleeding to death and losing an arm. Columbine quickly captured the soul of the nation and left it deeply scarred. The devastating injuries Casey st sustained and the Columbine shooting followed a year of adults and struggles, a year in which she suffered through the sudden deaths of four friends, a deep depression, and a plan for her suicide. In this story of courage and resilience, Casey recounts how she overcame the physical, emotional, and mental suffering of these events to build a life, a family, and a loving home. Through sharing her story, she has discovered a surprising path to helping and encouraging others. Also, you guys, I would love to know what your favorite Halloween movie is. Because in my next video, I might uh, do quotes from Halloween movies, but you got to tell me what your favorite Halloween movies are. And you also got to tell me which book you'd like me to read to you guys for the month of October. And I swear I'll try to make as many videos as I can. I work 12 hour shifts at my job, so I hardly ever get time to make videos anymore. But this is Columbine. Oh, the next book is Columbine by Dev Colin. Uh, I, this is probably one of my favorite books of all time. It's very interesting, it's got a lot of information about the case, uh, about what, about Dylan and, and Eric and their life and what led up to everything. Um, I don't want y'all to think I'm weird about liking, like, finding books like this interesting. It's just, oh, I don't, I know there's a lot of true crime people out there that like true crime, and I know I'm not the only one, but this is probably my, one of my favorite books. stamp on the American physique, but most of what we know 
was wrong. It wasn't about jocks, goss, or the trench coat mafia. Dave Cullen was one of the first responders on the scenes. I mean, reporters on the scene, and he spent 10 years on this book, widely recognized as the definite account. With a keen investigative eye and psychological acumen, he draws on mountains of evidence and sight from the world's leading forensic psychologists and the killers on words and drawings. Several are reproduced in a new appendix. Colin paints raw portraits of two popular of two polar opposite killers. They contrast starkly with the flashes of resilience and redemption among the survivors. And I, I would also like to apologize to you guys and say, if I skip over my words or I stutter, I'm so sorry. It's a part of my anxiety. So if I say a word wrong or if I st stutter or stumble over the words, please forgive me. Okay, but this is Columbine, and a shout out to Prim ASMR and Soft ASMR, who make, have been making some of my favorite ASMR videos uh, this month and every month. <laughs> uh, those are two ASMR artists I've really been enjoying the last few months, soft ASMR, especially our true crime videos, and Prim ASMR, which I love her final collection videos, and I love her role plays, which she's doing like a role play for October, so she's doing role plays every day until Halloween, which I think is awesome, she is so good at, so definitely check those two out, and I'm sure you've heard of them. Soft ASMR and Prim, Prim, P R I M ASMR. And the last one does not have a um, a um, a sleeve to it. It's called For Casey by Sharon Roche. Yeah. 
where my family and I have experienced new depths of anger, pain, fear, confusion, frustration, and grief. We saw Scott convicted for murder, but we were <clears throat> we were never getting Lacey back. This ordeal continues to feel like a horrible sickness for which there's no cure. Lacey was my daughter, my best friend, and a wonderful person. She added to the world in a positive way. You knew everything you ever needed to know about her the instant she smiled. I needed to be convinced it was okay to write this book, and that wasn't quick or easy process. I did a lot of soul searching. I wondered if it was inappropriate and fretted I was betraying Lacey. I had many conversations with her about these issues. Then one day I recalled a conversation I'd had with De Detective Craig Corkin during the trial. I'd asked him if the dog handlers who were involved in the original search for Lacey were still looking for her. He said no and explained that the handle's expenses are comfort through do donations are out of their own pockets and basically the police department was, was out of money. Recalling that conversation became a deciding factor. I'd use money from this book to start a fund for search and rescue in memory of Lacey and Connor. I knew Lacey would approve. In this book, I've tried to recall some of those everyday moments that well know Lacey the way her family and friends did. She deserves to be remembered for her life, not her death. I've always described to the best of my ability what I went through from that first unsuspecting moment when I picked up the phone on December 24, 2002, to the tears I cried when Scott was convicted of murdering Lacey and Connor and was sentenced to death. For the past couple of years, I have filled Lacey's old bedroom with everything I have from her life and her death. You can't get into the room anymore. Whenever I received a box of letters, I put them in there. When the San Luis bus businessman sent me two paintings he found that she'd done in high school, I leaned them against her old bed. I saved every newspaper article and put them in boxes. In the back, in the back corner is a cedar chest container, cheerleader outfits, school awards, letters, and back and albums, all things I struggled to retrieve from her old house after she was murdered. I saved her belongings so I wouldn't lose her. On the day I started this book, I opened my cedar chest and some of the boxes for the first time. I found papers she wrote in grade school. I reread the holiday cards she made as a child, each one ending with love, Lacey. I watched her wedding video again and cried out how beautiful and happy she was that day. I also went to the house where she lived with Scott, and I walked through the park where we looked for her in the cold. The night Scott called and said she was missing. The night our lives changed forever. I wanted to put it all in this book, and I tried. By going through all this again, this time on my terms, I hope to start the healing process and repair some of my heart and heartbreak. Thus far, that has proved to be unrealistic. I still cry every day. I've moved forward, but not very far. My wound has remained large and fresh. I don't know if I'll ever heal. I think you learned to live with the pain. I still talk to Lacey. There's so many things I still want to say to her. I tell her I'm so sorry this happened. I'm sorry I wasn't there to protect her when she needed to be protected. I'm sorry I didn't see Scott for who he really is and get her away from him before he could hurt her. I tell her how much I miss her, how much I wish she was still here, able to stop by or call, and how much I love her. I can't recall a single day since she disappeared. When I haven't thought about her and cried, I'll hear a certain song, catch a particular scent, see a sunflower, a ladybug, or a dragonfly, her favorites, or pass her junior high school, and I will be reminded of her. For a moment, I'll forget she's gone, then it hits me cruelly and hard. About a year after Lacey was murdered, I was on my way out of the house, and I just 
just closed the door behind me when I heard the phone ring. I hurried back inside thinking it might be Lacey because I hadn't spoke to, spoke to her for a long time. Of course it wasn't Lacey. It won't ever be Lacey. These are still tough times. I get by one day at a time. I feel better when I'm helping others. I speak out on behalf of victims' rights. I'm eternally grateful to my family and friends. My circle of love has referred to them. We have been with us from day one of this nightmare. In times of despair, they offered hope. During times of weakness, they provided strength. In moments of hate, they gave love. Okay, this is just... Okay. As always, I want to express my unending gratitude to the Sands Los County District Attorney's Office and the Modesto Police Department and to every person and organization that helped search for Lacey and Connor and sought justice for their murders. I also want to acknowledge everyone who sent emails, cards, photos, flowers, and gifts who posted messages in our online guest book and who kept us in their prayers. I may have often fe felt alone, but I know I was never by myself. All of you sustained me through the worst times. I believe there is more love in the world than there is pain, and when I'm feeling doubtful about that or down, I remind myself of it by looking at the cards and letters I received, such as this one. Dear Sharon, I know it's not the same as if you were getting the card from Lacey, but I hope this eases some of the pain on Mother's Day. My mother won't talk to me and never loved me. My baby, my baby does not have a grandmother. I wish I could bring Lacey back to you. I don't have a mother, so I hope you don't mind if I make you my mom today. I've never been able to fully understand why Lacey's disappearance and murder captivated so many people. But I'm old theory. I believe that Lacey wasn't going to allow Scott to get away with murder, so she kept the spotlight shining down on him until he was convicted. She was determined to see him punished. At the same time, I know Lacey wouldn't have believed all the attention. The outpouring of love and concern would have amazed her. Whenever she was surprised about something, she said, Nuh-uh. And I can hear her saying that about all the attention her story gathered around the world. Nuh-uh, Ma. She wasn't perfect, but there was something special about Lacey. She couldn't wait to be a mom. When she smiled, every one of her five feet one inches lit up. You felt her enthusiasm. She made an impression she was a real person, not a face in a magazine. And I will always remember her as someone who truly lived life, who savored each moment of her life. I give anything to go back in time for one more minute with her. She loves God. All of us did. Not only did I lose Lacey and Connor, I also lost my son-in-law. The Scott Peterson the world came to know is not the Scott Peterson we knew before December 24, 2002. We learned about that person through police investigation and in court, in the papers and on television, the same as everyone else. Prior to that, he was different. All of us were. This book is also really good, too. I really recommend it. It's very heartbreaking, but she writes really well. So anyways, that is my revised uh, true crime collection. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please pick out a book for me to read to you guys. And please also tell me what your favorite Halloween movie is. And I will do a video. Alright, I will talk to you guys later.